Okay, in this video, we're going to look at using the summarization checker and other ways that you can deal with hallucination related to summarization in the large language models. So you can see I've just got normal imports, nothing different there. So first off, I'm just going to set up a very simple sort of idea of a prompt. And this is going to be like just getting some facts out so we can look at something. So rather than bring in a whole text file or something like that, I've gone for an article. So this is an article about Coinbase's earnings here. And you can go through and have a look at that. We can see the length of article and the number of characters. So obviously any summarizations, we want to be quite a lot less than that. All right. So the prompt that I'm going to use is basically just extract the key facts out of this text. Don't include opinions, give each fact a number and keep them in short sentences. And then we're just going to pass in the article. So. You can see here we're doing that and we're running it. And sure enough, it gives us back a nice list of facts. So we've got Coinbase released its Q4 earnings. And this is often a much better way to deal with sort of fact checking. And you'll see that in the summarization checker, they also use something like this. The reason for this is you can then basically train, you could train an external model to look at the two, or you could use a large language model for this as well. We'll see. But you can also do things like looking up graphs and stuff like that. So we'll look at that right at the end as well. We've got the facts here. It's very important that you remember that when you do something like this, set your language model to a temperature of zero for this kind of thing. So let's look at the summarization checker. Langchain actually has a summarization checker chain built in, and we can set a few things on this. So we set up our language model with a temperature of zero. We're going to go for verbose equals true here, just so we can see the outputs and understand what's actually going on. And then we can set the number of checks that we want it to do. So that's basically like the number of passes through that we want it to do. So we're going to feed in the article, the same as what we had before. And you can see that, okay, this is entering the chain. We're then basically using their prompt. So this is just given some text, extract a list of facts. So they're doing the same kind of thing as I just did above. Format your output as bullet points or as bulleted list. And then there's the article being passed in. And we can see the output from this is actually pretty similar to what we got just using a straight LLM chain here. The difference is that we're now it's passing that output into a new chain or into a new LLM chain where it's basically setting the context that you are an expert fact checker. You've been hired by a major news organization to fact check a very important story. And then here is a list of bullet points. And for each fact, determine whether it is true or false about the subject. If you are unable to determine the fact is true or false, output undetermined. If the fact is false, explain why. And we can see that sure enough, it goes through and it's gone through each of these and put the true next to each of these, because the, the facts I think in this article are reasonably simple. It's gone through it and put true next to each of these. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes you'll find that it does get some of these wrong, right? So this is not a hundred percent guaranteed way to stop errors, but it will stop quite a number of errors. Then we can pass it. We're passing in the original summary there. And this final one, we're basically saying below are some assertions that have been fact checked and labeled as true or false. If the answer is false. A suggestion is given for a correction. Now, using those and using the original uh, article that we've passed in, now we're basically using these check decisions to rewrite the original summary to be completely true. And then we go through, and then finally, once we've got that out, we've got just the language model checking again how it does the assertions to check these as we go through and it's done each of these going through. And then finally it gives us out our summary, which is clearly about a third as long as it was before. Now, what you can do is you can play around with these prompts. So let's look at the prompts here, right? So we've got multiple chains going on here. First one, we've got the create assertions chain. So this create assertions chain here, you'll see that it's got a very simple prompt. Just give some text, extract a list of facts from the text format your output as a bulleted list. Nothing really unusual there. The next one is the checking the assertions. So just copy these so they're just easier to read here. We can see that just is passing in the assertions. And then we've got the revised summary prompt where it's basically doing the revision of this. And then finally, we've got the assertions, basically whether we're using these to be true or false, just building up on, on what we had there. 
for example, if it says that, okay, some of them are false, but one is true, then it's still going to be false. In this case, we have to have all, all true. We've prompted it to see that, okay, unless everything is true, you should raise an error. And that's finally how we get our output that's going to be from that. This sort of just shows you how it works. It actually works pretty nicely, I find, for at least for articles and stuff like that. It is very useful for doing short summaries. Now, I'm not sure how well it will work for very large summaries because the challenge there can be that facts can be established in one part of a book and then referred to in another part of a book. That raises a challenge when you're dealing with a very limited token span width for this kind of thing. There's the checker chain, just so you can actually have a look and see all the different parts of the chain that are there. And then lastly, I just thought I'd put in a simple way. Another trick you can do is make these into triples. So here I've put a simple prompt that takes these and puts them, the outputs like a trip, a set of triples for a knowledge graph. And then you could actually use a knowledge graph to look this up. So you would need to reconcile the nodes related to the nodes that you have on your knowledge graph. But more and more that there are things out there with this kind of information. So you could use a combination of the original article and a knowledge graph to provide a response. That can be really useful for things for dealing with maybe customer inquiries or something like that, where you've got some sort of knowledge, you've got some sort of FAQ, and then you've got some sort of knowledge graph, and you can use both of them to provide answers as well. So that's not just summarization for this kind of thing. All right. If you've got any questions, as always, just put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.